Good morning and welcome back to Planner Craft. I'm Natalie and I'm going to take you through a little bit with the scanner today. So, it's just checking that all the cameras are working. We did have a few technical issues. So hopefully you can see us okay and you can hear us okay. If not, just pop something in the comments um, and we'll be soon to sort. So today I'm going to be working with the Paper Boutique Make Time For You Doily Die Set. So I've already cut a few different dies from the collection. So I have our main feature image and I've also cut that from um, white card. And I've also cut the shadow layer, the aperture layer. And then there was a little tiny white bit. Don't let anybody on your desk to clean it off because it's gone. Which was that bit there. But okay, I'll just have to try and cut that one. Okay, so I'm going to pop me scan, well, my die into my scan mat. Zinger says morning, Tracer says hi gang, and you have Sue watching who says watching this one closely, thank you. Okay, so you'll notice that I've cut my die cut from white card and I've put black piece of card in to scan it. Now the reason is, if you think about it, if you cut your piece of um, card and it's black, you've got that lovely rounded edge that you get from a die, which also then puts a lovely tiny, but it does make a difference, tiny shadow onto the back of your scan mat so when it goes through it's not always 100% accurate. So therefore I thought what would be the better solution is if we do it in white then if a shadow falls on black card all it does is make it darker so you get a better scan. So that is why I do it that way around. And your mum's in this morning as well. Hi mum. So I'm going to pop down my, oh, my scanner. I've already had my scanner cut on this morning, in case you're wondering why it's up and running. <laughs> so I've had it working. <laughs> okay, I'm going to load in my mat. The other thing is, if you have a new scan mat, there'll be a blue strip along here. Just peel that off and chuck it away. Make sure whenever you load in your scan mat, that, that top white bar is clean. It's important, that's what it uses to um, balance your scanner. Okay, so our top sheet, if you're finding there's a mark on there, just a little tiny mark. I might just get that with a little bit of alcohol later. Should be alright. So we're going to go to scan and my lip pencil's done on it. It was on this next, it was just here on your desk. Uh, it's hiding underneath that. There we go. So usually when we're doing um, like fuzzy cutting with images we'll go to direct cut. So for today we're going to go to scan to cut data instead. So whenever you're using your scan map you'll always go to scan to cut data. Okay, because we're doing um, white on black, we can change it to black and white. So what that's saying is that you've got a high level of contrast. Right? Okay, it just looks a bit fuzzy on the... It does sort out the focus because it looks a bit... Perhaps you've got a fingerprint on your lens or something. Okay, anyway, so, okay, then press play. Can you press that?
Now typically when I'm scanning a diet it's not because I want a copy of that diet, it's because I want to do something specific with it. So for instance we could actually join three of these and make a card blank so that you actually have them like a screen. So it comes up with three options and we can decide whether we're going to go just round the outside so if you want to do like a, a shadow layer. So if we do that first. And if we go to save and just for now I'm going to save it to the machine. Okay, now it will always save it with a number and you can't give it a name or make it make any logical sense whatsoever. <laughs> Sue's asked if you've done one with a stamped image by any chance. Totally new to here so absorbing everything just got to scan that and um, 900 cm. Yeah, I've done fuzzy cutting stamped images. I've probably done a little bit with saving those as well, I think, when we did the Scanning Masterclass. So there's a video that's called Scanning Masterclass, and if you look at that one, I take you through direct cutting, scan to cut data, and also going online to the enhanced image tracing as well. So um, that might be one to pop up on the wall later in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I'm, I've now saved that outside line, so now I'm going to go press the next one down. And now it's going to pick out all of this little detail around. Thank you, Tom. That's okay. And we can save, and it will give it another number. So we'll go to the machine, and that should be 56 probably. Okay, and this one is if you wanted to use it for a drawing line. It won't always work, and sometimes it goes a bit weird, but it's worth having it so that you can play with it and just see what it will do for you. So if we go save. And, okay. So now that we've saved our three options, we can just go back out of it and go OK. So without unloading our map, we can lift our protective cover. Uh, Tracy's asked if you've seen the review she left yet on Amazon. No, I haven't. I haven't dared look at Amazon actually. <laughs> no, not yet. So we'll go and have a look after Tracy. But thank you for leaving a review. I, I got a little bit upset, didn't I, when I saw the uh, yeah. one. So, no, not been back on since. Okay, so you just want to make sure that whenever you're scanning that you've got the correct edge. So you'll notice when I do this, I always leave a good gap at the top and the left hand edge. And that's so that you can get a clear scan. One of the most common mistakes that people make when they're scanning is they stick it right up into this corner and then go, well, it's only picking up a few dots. And that is where they're going wrong. You need to always bring it in when you're scanning. And that's the same way if you're scanning to cut data, if you're enhanced image tracing, or if you're doing a direct cut. Deborah says good morning. Morning, Deborah. Um, did you find the font okay, Deborah? If not, let me know, because I think that might be one of the ones that came off the um, archives I fought afterwards. Okay, so I'm going to go back to scan to cut data, and it's still black and white.
Okay, so we've got our scan in line and we're going to go round the outside first of all. So that's going to pick up our shadow layer. So we can go save to the machine. Okay. Thank you, Tracy. I will have a look at it. If we zoom right into here. And press preview it will pick up the little hands so then we can go save and get into the machine this is going to be so fun when it comes back to to getting this back onto the machine because the numbers I do wish they changed the numbers system so they're not necessarily sequential are they no no not if you've deleted a few in the middle one yeah so when we do this next box you want to try and do it so that you come inside your um, shadow layer so that we're just picking up our aperture. If we go to preview, careful. Okay, we can go to save and draw machine. Now, while we're doing this, if there's anything that we want to offset, we can do because. Um, Offsetting is actually easier to do at this stage than it is to do when we actually pull it into our design on our map, which is a bit bizarre. So, I think I'm happy with that because that position isn't exactly where I want it on that shadow, so I'm not going to save it as a whole. Unload that one. We can pop in our next piece. Go back and scan again. Why save to machine and not USB? Hmm? Why save to machine and not USB? Because uh, I haven't got USB attached. <laughs> That's the only reason. Um, usually, yes, I'd be saving to USB and I always put a USB extension cable on as well just to look after the machine. I do actually have a very funky USB then tied to go in my machine. Which one? My round one. Mm. Should uh, put them up on the group see if people would be interested in another one. So we've got our uh, neck shape on. Now with this one I want to make sure I keep this detail. The scan and cut probably won't cut it exactly the same but at least it will give you a kind of stitched effect. Uh, can I was asking, can you still do this without the scanning mat? Could you do it with the... The only thing that I would say about um, trying to do scan to cut data without the scanning mat is you have to go careful because your cutting mat typically has dots or lines on it depending on which one you've got. Um, so those can interfere which is why your scan mat has no marks if you notice. Um, the other thing is this Protective sheet is also supposed to help with the contrast a little. Yeah, no, <laughs> can't see that working, but um, so that's the other thing to bear in mind. You can do it, um, but you you might just struggle. Um, just trying to think how you could do it with the black and white. You'd probably actually have to stick your white pieces to your black card to put it on your cutting mat to then do it. So. Whereas I then tend to use my white die cut pieces and to do something else, usually. So I'm just going to... Just because it pulled up that outside one. Okay. 
So hopefully, says, we can go back home. We can go to pattern, and if we go to save data to our machine, we can pull in. Let's go for. Let's go for that one and just check that work. Because if it didn't, just want to see if I can delete that without deleting everything. There we go. And that's just where it's picked up a few bits on the map. That's fine. There we go. And if we get OK, we can zoom in so we can see right up to 400%. And I just want to check the quality of the scan. So you can see that with um, some of the bits it's gone a bit jagged but that isn't necessarily what I want to use it for. Like I said I'm not going to use scan to cut data to basically replicate what I can do with the die. There wouldn't be the point. <laughs> so it would be just as quick for me to run it through a die cutting machine as it is to get the scanner cut to cut it. So what I'm going to do instead is if I go to OK, I'm going to go to Add and then I'm going to go to my cloud. Now off stream what I've already done is just created a quick frame that will fit my um, die image in the aperture and then gone outwards using offset to create the outside edge. I've then subtracted the smaller rectangle from the larger one to get a frame. So it's a very simple rectangle frame. So if I zoom in, you can see there's my frame. And then if I go too far, actually, just because it's grouped everything else, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to go to my little window selection rather than select all. I'm going to drag it so that it's between the two points. Go OK, OK again, and group. There we go. So I'm just going to zoom in a bit, and I just want to get this lined up so it goes over the edge of my frame. And it should just about overlap all the way around. So I might just need to go down a notch, and left a notch. positioned it where I want it. I'm just going to ungroup it. And this is where you're going to want a bit of patience because I want to get to that nice big frame and also zoom in. I need the outer bit of my die. So that's got the frame selected. So if we come on, let me get to it. Give <laughs> it going to do that. Okay, if you're having trouble when you're finding it's doing that for you, show you the easy way to go home. Okay, bring them in the other way round so that that then goes to the back. Before, just get rid of the bits we don't need. Good. 
group those so we can move it as one. So that needs to move down. I think the sideways motion is okay, so it's just down a little bit. So I'm selecting my two outermost shapes and I'm going to weld them. We can zoom to make sure that we're happy with our weld. So we can see that we've got nice joints there, there, there and down here and down the bottom. Okay so it's a little off there but uh, it's not bad for life. <laughs> then does is that actually creates a frame that we can then decorate as well. <sighs> Warm. Is anybody else melting or is it just us? <laughs> okay so into our centre panel now we know that that normally cuts solid and we could leave it like that if we're planning to just overlay our die cut image over the top. So I think for this one yeah, let's leave it solid. Can you do it on PC instead of screen, please? Yes. It can be, can't it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can, yeah, easily. So, the, the reason that we have to create our frame on the computer and bring it in is that you can't subtract on the machine. So, if you are confident using the computer, use the computer because you have a bigger screen and there's more that you can do. So um, if you want to want, watch any of our um, Canvas videos, I take you through the different functions, um, including your welding, subtracting, dividing, and removing overlap, which is a godsend. So if we go OK. Now, at this point, you want to remove your scan mat. But yes, do go back and have a look at some of the other videos too, because there's lots on uh, Canvas Online, uh, Canvas Workspace, the desktop version. Um, Affinity. Affinity Designer, there's lots of um, tutorials that we've done. Yeah, and we have a Begins Workshop <laughs> for Affinity tomorrow. Yes. So if you are interested in Affinity Designer, uh, which is the program that we use to create a lot of her, um, files, um, then you can have a look on, uh, we're doing that tomorrow from 9.30 and it is £15, it's a three hour session. Um, all in the, and that's tomorrow. So if you do want to watch that too tomorrow, um, it's on the event on the Plan Craft page. That's the top one. 
And there's a link in there for payment. Okay, so I'm going to go with the Moonlight Song collection. I still find new paper. Tracy's made it. Are you going overhead now? What do you want? Scanning cut still? Um, leave it on um, scanning cut for me. Scanning cut, okay. Just while we're doing design things. Um, Tracy just said that Sue might also benefit. I don't know if you already have it, Sue, or not. Um, from having our book, um, which has helped Tracy a lot. There you go, so she'll have a look at that later. So, yes. Um, if you go onto Amazon, our book is available on there. It's uh, Go Create. Yeah. And we'll, 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 we'll uh, do a friend. quick preview at the end. I'm just trying to see if I've got any of the dot dot dot. It doesn't look like it. it looks like we're running out already. <laughs> oh, I do love this cardstock though. It's one of my favourites to work with. Probably only a five now, because I've had to learn my blade. Okay. Oh, I need to sort out and see if it goes up to. So, if you're happy with your frame, before you go too far, actually. Just a, a quickie. If you're going to select all, go OK and group it, and then you can just move it around as you need to. Um, the other benefit of working on your machine to the desktop version is that um, your lines are both cut and draw lines, same as if you're working on the online canvas. Uh, desktop, you can only be one or the other, which is a bit of a pain. Especially when duplicate doesn't put it exactly in the same place, it offsets it slightly. So you, you kind of have to then try and yeah get where you need it to go. The other thing to note is I always take my blade out whenever I'm loading a mat and just saves on the bent corners. And of course, not chipping your blade. So I reckon it's a five. Ah, oh, there you go, well, Mr. Water Blade over in the corner. Not doing much. <laughs> Look if I need to find one of my top shoes bits then. Two hundred. Yeah, five will easily cut them. Okay, um, the other thing to note about um, labels as well, I mean, you've probably missed like the maintenance videos that we did, don't move labels on blade holders, <laughs> please don't, it does annoy me when I see people recommending that you do because we actually spoke to brother and they said don't do it. <laughs> Me being Mr. Roger Blade. <laughs> Makes a change from map picture. <laughs> mm, so, if you're finding that it's pulling, usually that means that your pressure is too high. When you see where my pressure is, you're going to be like, that's too high. So, I'm currently on minus five, so I'm going to go down a bit more. Let's try. Do you reckon minus six would do it for minus five, or do I go down another notch? Yeah, it goes minus six first. And take it from okay. And then just carry on.
And it's still pulling. Full of gunk just from that, though. Well, to be honest, the actual blade itself still looks pretty. Uh, Alison's just joined and asked if she can tell her what project you're doing. So she's new to the scanning cut. I've had it for a while, but she's still not sure what she's doing. Okay. Uh, what I'm doing at the moment is I'm doing a bit of scanning and layering. 
copy some dies so that I can have like a, a layered file from a die collection. So I've just created a frame and we'll see how we go for getting this off the mat just because it, it's much interesting. Yeah. There's just one bit that didn't quite work. But hey, this is live. <laughs> One bit is a record. <laughs> what on a live stream? Yeah. <laughs> Would be if you were doing it. <laughs> oh dear. So I'm just going to very carefully just lift it off. You can always pull the bits out after. Um, it can be because it needs a new blade. It can also be if you pressure that a little bit too high. So always check your pressure first. Um. Yeah, my, mine started to act a bit odd, sort of yesterday and today, hasn't it? Yeah. So even though it's on like minus five, it's it's well, down to minus little. seven now. Yeah. Yeah, and I haven't got anything on minus nine since we did that vinyl. I'm gonna have to unload that actually. Let me swap it overhead for you. Yes, please. So this is one of the reasons why we always recommend a metal spatula over the um, plastic one that you get with your machine. How old's your blade? Huh? How old's your blade? Uh, I haven't replaced it since Hereford, so what's that? Best part of a year and a half? Yeah, it's about 18 months, isn't it? Yeah. I'm just saying her blade's a year old, so... Yeah, yeah really. my first one lasted two years, wasn't it? So. Yeah, they will last if you look after them. And even then, when I had to replace my first blade, it wasn't because the actual blade had gone. Um, something had gone wrong with the shaft of the blade, so it, it when it would turn, it would grate rather than just pivoting nicely. So that's when I ended up replacing it. Actually, that's that's a good point. Well, yeah. that's out. I'll just check it. I'll check it before you see it from Hmm. Might just need a a, a clean. Yeah. Sorry. There you go. Feel that way. I'm fine, and I can carry on doing this. So when we're scanning with the scanning cup, um, it doesn't always pick up the lines the way that you think it does so it's quite difficult to see sometimes so nine times out of ten you'll find at least one bit that you want to snip with scissors just to get in the right place so I'm just going to snip there because I want to take this bit out And there's just a little bit, so which one am I on? Overhead? Yes. Okay, so I can come up here. So there's just a little bit in there that there isn't a cut line. So it doesn't always close the shapes. Which is good if you're drawing, but not so good if you're cutting. And same with the, the little vein on my leaf here. Join just down here. I'm just going to snip that like that for now, and I can take it through to the back and do it. Okay. Oh, that made me jump. this bit where it's pulled so this is a signal that you pass to us so if you're finding 
pulls like this on your card, then lower your pressure. You're probably just trying to so just tidying that up. Because when it skips a line it for some reason it then doesn't complete the rest of the line properly. There we go. And then when we're adhering it to our card we can usually fix it or patch it. Stuck for what something is supposed to look like, just bring in your original die cut, and you can go, right, okay, so that bit's supposed to come out of there. Okay, so I'm just going to take that up. I can't see comments at the moment, but as soon as Ian comes back, we'll. Do a quick catch up with um, your comments. Now, one of the reasons that I say that I wouldn't just copy a die is for this exact reason is that you'd never get, you get close to, but you don't get a perfect replica. So, Nine times out of ten, it's just quicker to just use the original die. So, like, it's missed out the whole sections on here. Mm, the rest of that isn't too bad, actually. That's that one little bit. So, we'll just Put little flowers or something and cover that up. Okay. Let me see if I can comment. Uh, yeah, nothing but straight seeing shapes, you have some time with the blade. Yeah, it it's probably just that it just needs a little bit of TLC. Um, what were we doing with it the other day? I think we were doing a detail, weren't we? So it just needs a just needs a bit of a clean with some alcohol and yeah. it'll be fine. A little bit of glitter in there. Glitter? How on earth has it got glitter in there? Haven't you done any glitter? To manage somewhere to pick it up off my desk, that'd be a miracle. Okay. So once you've got most of the stuff off your map, just because I have a, okay. I was going to change my sheet anyway, so that's a quicker way of doing it. <laughs> Bed. 
it's going to go very very lightly across my mat it's a new mat so it will stick to it a lot Cutting a lot of cardboard grit in 87 probably needs a bit of sharpening. Yeah, if you do with cardboard, yeah, I would appreciate the sharpen. It's a ball in foil, isn't it, for sharpening? Yeah. Stab repeatedly. Carefully. Yeah. Yeah, don't, don't, don't go at it hammer and tong, else you can. Damage than good. Yeah. Okay. So we have our frame there. To that I'm gonna add my chocolate there. So then I want to add another layer to the backing, so I think I'm going to go with the. And I just have the card pack back. Ha. Oh. Sorry, I've got to pass it over to you. <laughs> so. okay. I'm going to go to the lighter colour. I'm going to create contrast. I might even go to the blue. Having looked at it, I think I might go for the blue. I'm just going to go OK. And at this point, if we go back, we can save, save to the machine. OK. OK. I'm going to go back home, delete. Pattern save data back to our machine and I'm going to go to the one that looks like the solid layer and go OK and move that up to the top corner doesn't always help so you've got the blue back in so if you've had your um, cap off your blade, just always make sure that you go back past 12 so you know that it's in the right place and then back to your normal blade system, so in this case 5. Yeah, I wanted to do it on, on video because I don't think we've really said about that, have we? On well, we've actually been working on a project rather than doing the maintenance one. Because we're still in the maintenance, definitely.
go to our next colour and I'm going to go that way around just to save wasting too much colour. So whenever you send something via the internet, it will hold it there until you next send something else. So there's no rush to go, oh, I must go to the machine next. It will just keep retrieving it and retrieving it and retrieving it as many times as you like. So this time I want to cut just the outside edge, but not the inside edge. So I'm going to go to add. I'm going to bring in a rectangle doesn't matter on the size at the moment. I'm going to bring it over the top of my frame. I'm going to select tool and then if I go to my little arrows I can go to line and if we go center and center then we know our two shapes are overlapping. Now that means, as we resize our shape from the centre outwards, as it does, that means that it should then be able to get it to fit between our inside line and our outside line nice and easily without having to do lots of fiddly movement. So if we go OK, OK again, click off it. So it's still got that centre panel selected. And I'm just going to press our little two arrow button so that we can alter these independently. zoom in, go to 400 just to make it nice and easy. So we need to go a little bit taller and a little bit wider. Press the blue button again because it's forgotten. So as long as it's blue we can then alter these independently. Zoom in, and that looks like we've literally got that edge to edge, so we just need to go one wider in either direction, or two, and two, and zoom, just to check it again. Yep, we're still within our frame, and if we go down to the bottom, we're still within our frame there too. Okay, select tool, weld it, okay, that gives us our solid. And we can cut that out. We 
then have a layer that matches our frame exactly. So then we can build up our design. Okay. And then I just need my little clock hands, don't I? Because it's been missing. Do you get your die cuts off your desk? Have you got any of that? Uh, I can see it. It's when you cleaned it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Yay! So there we go. I can pop that in like so. So we have our layers. Another couple of ideas for you. I did this with partial die cutting and um, I was planning on doing it as a um, zigzag card so um, I was doing partial die cutting and it went a bit too far so this one's just going to be a single fold card for now but what I did with this one was embossed it and before I um, embossed it I just inked up the die with some vintage let me know let me get the right one Aged Mahogany and Rusty Hinge Distress Ink. So I'm going to be going back over that with some antique linen. And you can do a similar thing with your scan and cut if you wish to. So you can take your layer before we put, added the frame and actually join three of them and then you can do your zigzag card. So I'm going to try and do that in a bit off stream. So you know, it's going to be a tight fit, so I, I wanted to have a play with that one off stream. Any questions? Yeah, I think Tracy wanted to ask me about drawing, didn't you? Okay, so. so ask away Tracy, because I can always do a little bit of drawing on our decorative panel. What would you like to know? So if I just pop my panel and I'm just going to use my grid on my mat just to help me position it so it's nice and square. Whenever we're working direct to a shape, you know, positioning is kind of critical. Or she's going to have wonky text and nobody wants that. Drawing. Just wonder why something that I drew today that I have drawn before took three times longer and it changed from drawing lines to dotting it. As in a dashed line, uh, you'd have to change that on. I know what it is. If you've sent it from desktop and you have no um, or a transparent stroke for your cut line it changes it to a dot rather than a solid line so that's usually what's gone wrong and it's lost its stroke if you haven't set it purposely to being a dotted line um, What's the next question? It's, it's a comment from Sue saying thank you for this since you looked at our other videos in our book. Yes, book, book, it's behind you. <laughs> you want to okay. head, so. Okay, so book one. 
So when you're looking for this on Amazon, make sure it is book one, Beginner's Guide to the Scan and Cut, because there's actually two books up there at the moment. Um, hopefully four by the end of next month. Hmm. So this one is literally the Beginner's Guide to the Scan and Cut. So I take you from setting up your machine. So it covers both CM and DX. I've got all the blades and holders in there. That's been too long on page. Okay. Accessories, canvas, both versions and shortcuts. Um, the shortcut one is a handy one. So curving text, creating shapes, all the hints and tips for getting started. Um, editing shapes on machines, and you can see we've, we've used nice big photos. Tracy said she hadn't changed any settings from the last time she did it. Oh, that's a bit odd. Um, send me the form, just let me check it is okay. Okay, so first drawing, first cutting, first vinyl, first fabric, mixed media, um, so that's about cutting stencils, saving scan designs, your direct cutting for fussy cutting, and downloading files. There you go. Very quick whistle stop tool free book one. Um, the other one that's up there at the moment is the annual, um, which was officially the first book out, um, which kind of rounded off the magazine, didn't it? Yes. And then we're currently working on a book based on the back issues of the magazine and also a book on designing with vectors for crafters. So that's cut files, um, digi stamps, okay. creating papers. So it says the file that she sent yesterday. So All right, okay, yeah, we'll have a look. We'll have a look and just check nothing's gone wrong. Okay. Yep, because I can't replicate that issue, so I'll have a think about what I want to put in here then. Uh, the part is the one with the girl on the bike, the draw part, and the lamppost. Okay, so dot is that. Mm. That's a bit strange. Yeah. We will have a look. She sent you the canvas first. So. Yeah, yeah, I'll have a look and see. It might be something that's really obvious when I look at it. You never know. <laughs> okay, so, mm. um, I'll put this together off stream very quickly and I'll get Ian to pop it up on the group um, along with what I do with the card and I will try and quickly do the um, triptych card as well so you can see that. Uh, is that a video or a book with nodes? Sorry Sue. What book? Sue's asked, thank you, have you done one with nodes? Yes. But I don't know if it's a book or video she's referring to. So. Uh, we've done nodes in a video though. Yes, which was... Probably the intro to Canvas videos would be a good place to look for that. Mm. Um, but then nodes will definitely be in the vector drawing book. Definitely. Uh, video, I've... but yes, we have done video, yes. Yes, and there's even more information in the book. Yeah. So uh, I, I, I've already got what in the first the first part written, just waiting to be typed up. Mm. I'm getting that way. So yeah, it's going to be a biggie. Mm. Mind both of them are. So. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and Sue says, "Okay, she's off to you. Thanks." So <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's it from us today. Um, obviously don't forget Pete at half twelve. And Leslie at quarter past Leslie one. Leslie at quarter past one. She's doing a fantastic tutorial on resist techniques with gesso and she started it yesterday and I was like yes I want to do this one <sighs> and I couldn't so because <laughs> I was coming on stream. <laughs> so hopefully I'll get to join in with that one as long as I can get all oh, my I'm work done. I'd love to do a Japanese birthday card. Cool, 
So yeah, we're not back at two o'clock today. Um, we might do a um, like a watch party type thing, just so we can play in the background while we carry on doing some work. Um, obviously, we've got to get prepared ready for tomorrow's um, paid workshop. course workshop. Um, so there are still seats available if people want to join us. Um, um, please do have a look. Yeah, yeah, it, it's worth joining in for. Um, so it's going to be a good one. Okay, so thank you very much. And for those of you doing the course tomorrow, we'll see you tomorrow at half past nine. Yep, yeah, half past nine, early yeah, start. Half past nine, so it's an earlier start tomorrow, so don't be late. Um, and hopefully we'll, anybody else, we shall see you on Monday. Yep, yeah, so take care. And we'll probably be loitering about the group over the weekend, so you'll yes. probably see some, something pop up. So yes, we're never far away from Facebook. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I might just put a little surprise up, if you're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> so take care and we'll see yeah. you Monday. Bye. Bye.